I have two stories that I'm about to talk about back to back. This one says more women are skipping college to make six figures as electricians, car mechanics, and truck drivers. Women are out here doing trades. Then I'm going to talk about this fortune article. More young men are becoming NEETs than women, and NEETs stand for not in employment, education, or training. We've been talking about um, NEETs and men falling out of the workforce, so we're just going to juxtapose this and talk about these both today. I am a college grad. I do believe that all of these options should be on the table for women to do whatever the heck you want to do, and the opportunities are there, so go for it. With the high price of tuition at four-year colleges and Americans owing nearly $2 billion in student loan debt, some young people are questioning the benefits of a traditional bachelor's degree and opting to work with their hands. Vocational school enrollment shot up by 16% last year, reaching a record level since the National Student Clearinghouse began recording such data. Gen Z has even been dubbed the tool belt generation. While the majority of workers in trades are men, a growing number of women are opting to work with their hands. In 2020, 11.6% of those who completed an apprenticeship program in the U.S. were female, according to the Department of Labor. It's about time people started realizing that you can make more money, have a better career path, and a happier life, have a better family in the long term by doing stuff with your hands, said Victoria Carl, a 25-year-old Albany woman who owns her own car repair shop. Meet her and three other New York women working and thriving in trades. All right, so this is Victoria Carl. She owns her own car repair shop. They told me I couldn't do it, so that's why I did it. Carl told the post of going into automotive repair. At 21, with a 50% investment from her parents, she took over a shop and named it Carl's Advanced Automotive and Truck Repair Center in Albany. Now at 25, she has four full-time technicians, as well as rolling up her sleeves herself and, and is expecting net sales to be over a million dollars this year. She says, I grew up around cars, racing go-karts, restoring trucks with my dad. My family knew the previous owners and they always joked that I would own the shop one day, which was funny until it wasn't and it was serious. While attending the Voorheesville High School, Carl took part in a two-year Board of Cooperative Educational Services, or BOCES, program, which allowed her to attend heavy-duty truck classes during her junior and senior years of high school. At first, she encountered resistance. My guidance counselor said, absolutely not. Why don't you go to trade school for nursing or cosmetology or cosmetology? or go to college, she recalled. And honestly, at first it was terrifying when I was the only woman in class, but ultimately I became more confident. She went on to get an associate's degree in agricultural diesel technology from the University of Northwestern Ohio. As an employer now, I see the value of the trades. I'm always hiring. I can't get people in the door fast enough to make good mechanics. Carl also sits on the advisory board of the local automotive college and has seen a shift in how people regard her and her female counterparts. These older men are starting to really understand how valuable women are in this trade. It's fantastic. That is amazing. All right, now we have Brie Loomis. She says, I helped build the Bills Stadium. Look at her. Look how young she is. At just 19 years old, Loomis is already behind the wheel of some massive trucks. I don't really know what drove me. My dad always told me I could do anything I wanted. And now when I see other women out on the road working, we always wave. It's like our own little community. Day to day, she works on drainage and ditching crews, driving Mack and international trucks. She also salts and plows state roads in the wintertime a critical job in harsh Western New York winters. I could imagine myself working for the state for a very long time, she said. I just love what I do. Loomis attended a BOCES program in the 11th and 12th grades, spending half the school day learning to operate heavy equipment. Like Carl, she initially encountered some resistance. I remember telling my principal that I wanted to do this, and she told me I was too smart for that, that I should go to college or be an engineer. And I told her, no, this is what I want to do. It's so wild that girls will tell you that this is what they want to do, and people want to steer them some other kind of way. Like, let's cultivate 
employee's interest so that they can be happy in what they choose to do as a profession. The highlight of her brief career so far has been helping to build the Buffalo Bills Stadium. Last summer, she spent eight weeks operating dump trucks, rock trucks, and bulldozers at the construction, at the construction site. She loved the experience, but ultimately decided to take a job that required her to be less further afield. I saw what it was like to work 50, 60 hours a week and never be home. I don't have a family yet, but raising a family is one of my bigger dreams in life too. So I love that I found something that I love that would give me time to have a healthy work-life balance. All right, now we are moving to Shauna Irving. Women are building their cities. You love to see it. All right, it says, at 33, Irving is the youngest ever president of the women's club of her electrician's union, union, local union number three. And she's using her platform to recruit more young women in the field instead of pushing them away when they show an interest. I use every opportunity to encourage girls to be aware of what trade work is. And I always tell them, you can pretty much achieve anything. You can make the same amount of money as a man on the job, which is not guaranteed in other fields. Irving grew up in Brooklyn, where her father was a sheet metal worker. He'd show me things that he would build. And I thought, oh, man, this is so cool. My dad's like a real life Iron Man. She thought she might like to be a teacher or a physician, but her father suggested she become an electrician. The profession he described as like the prima donnas on the job site. It's also a lucrative career with many electricians in NYC making six figures. So in 2011, after high school, Irving enrolled in a new or non-traditional employment for women program in Manhattan, where she underwent training in collaboration with a union apprenticeship programs. Here she is working, doing her electrician work. Soon she was getting up early to be at job sites at 6 a.m. while her peers were just sleeping in after long nights of partying. I was fast tracked into being more responsible. After the death of several family members and a personal injury threw her off course, Irving completed her apprenticeship in 2019 and now makes $62 an hour plus benefits. While the Queens resident says some have questioned her electrician skills because of her sex, she's also encountered many helpful people. Not everyone thinks we belong there, but there are more brothers that are very supportive. I couldn't make it in my career without the men that have supported me throughout it. And increasingly, she's not the only woman in the room or on the job site. She says, I've noticed more and more women getting involved. They are starting to see the benefits of coming from diverse backgrounds to build their cities. This makes me so happy. We do need to we do need more pieces like this to make it possible to show the possibilities representation matters it shows a little girl who may have an interest with this type of thing that there are women in the fields because you do have people at schools or in families that try to discourage girls and this makes me so happy i'm so glad that one of my supporters sent me this um this article let me know what you think don't forget to like comment and share and now i'm about to make another video let's talk about these needs <laughs> not in employment and education or training if you're on my tiktok page this is going to be the next video a couple of weeks ago on my youtube page i posted a video called the great shift men leaving the workforce and i was talking about the 7.2 million men that have dropped out of the workforce and are not looking for a job this was a couple of weeks ago and for whatever reason the men got mad at me personally as if i am responsible for them falling out of the workforce and writing the article some of their comments do not make it to the post it gets filtered out and held for review alfonso said you are a wicked ass chick you are lonely and miserable as hell and want other women to join you you are sick as hell wow men got many options so you can literally keep that same energy until you're old and white head you and your small group are doomed taco lovers comment also did not make the post he says no one wants your nasty old ugly bitter ungrateful disrespectful salty ass women enough said <laughs> <laughs> Why are they so mad at me on this post? I don't know. And then Jason says, let men stop working for one day. You see you next Tuesdays will fold up like a chair. They are upset that men are falling out of the workforce and that women are speaking about it. But it is not my fault. But I am since this makes them very tender and makes them emotional. It makes them hysterical. I'm going to talk about it again.
This is another article that I did not write. This one is from Fortune. More young men are becoming neats than women, not in employment, education, or training. So this is not me talking about it, but I am going to talk about it. I'm sorry, this is not me that wrote it, but I am going to talk about it. And it's wild that they even used a man playing a video game as the main picture. There's a growing cohort of Gen Zers who are rejecting life's major milestones and becoming neats. That is not in employment, education, or training. Many of them are college educated men. One in five young people around the world are currently NEETS, according to the International Labor Organization. In the US, this jumps to about 11.2% of young adults. Meanwhile, in the UK, almost 3 million Gen Zers are now classed as economically inactive. New research has shown that male Gen Z grads are more likely than women to be among those opting not to, not to work or get some form of qualification. Despite having just graduated, one in five men under the age of 25 are unemployed, Bloomberg's analy um, analysis shows, and they're not actively looking for work either. While the share of Gen Z female college graduates participating in the workforce has steadily increased and participation rates for their male counterparts has nosedived. Why aren't they working? The class of 2023 and 2024 are confronting a tougher job market than those who graduated during the great resignation when hiring rates and wages hit a record high. It's a trend that Louis Malay, CEO of the global recruitment agency, Bentley Lewis, has witnessed too. While young college-educated women are making do by widening their job search, Malay has seen their male counterparts try to wait it out. Women tend to be more flexible in accepting job offers, even if they're not perfectly aligned with their career goals or are part-time or they're overqualified for. Men, on the other hand, often hold out for roles that align more closely with their ideal career path or offer what they perceive as adequate compensation and status. Some male candidates have been airing their frustrations that few jobs available right now don't match their expectations, whereas female candidates often discuss strategies for making the best of available opportunities, focusing on skill development and networking, even in less than ideal roles. Essentially, it's not that young men don't want to work, it's that they want the right type of work. Men have lost the upper hand. Another factor that comes into play, Malay asked, is that men no longer have the upper hand in certain sectors that they once dominated. So since they aren't oppressing women, since they're not the big dogs on campus, they are going to take their ball and just go home and be unemployed. <laughs> For years, male students have enjoyed more lucrative roles straight out of university thanks to their majors. A bank rate study published in September 2023 found that men accounted for almost four out of every five graduates with a bachelor's degree in the 20 highest paying fields. Four out of five, and that little space that is enjoyed by women is still just too much, I guess. All right, it says, however, male-dominated industries like technology and finance are currently experiencing mass layoffs and grad program slowdowns as they correct for overhiring during the pandemic and the economic uncertainty that followed. Holding out for that unicorn role. It perhaps explains why men have sky-high expectations, Connor Hughes, a HR consultant, echoes. They want that dream job title, the perfect culture fit, and a supreme compensation package right out of the gate. Instead of being open to decent opportunities as stepping stones, a lot of them would rather ride the unemployment wave while holding out for that unicorn role. After all, that's what they've seen their predecessors enjoy. This shift might make more men selective or hesitant, waiting for roles that match their expectations or past norms, which could lead to longer periods of unemployment, Malay agrees. There's an underlying narrative often unspoken about what constitutes acceptable work for men. Malay concludes, adding that societal pressure for men to be breadwinners deters them from taking what they view as lesser jobs, even temporarily. So because they can't really bring in all of the money or the highest amount of money, they would rather bring in zero money. This right here is an example of boy math, less money, is better in real life than zero dollars <laughs> but they would rather be unemployed you know ladies we're not going to be able to make this make sense all we can do is stay away from these people if 
it just just stay away just keep on filling in those spaces keep on sharpening those skills even if this is not a job that you want to stay at forever get your foot in the door add to add to that resume pad that resume get all of the extra skills that way you can you know be more flex or have more opportunities when the spots open up that you really want all right join the conversation let me know what you think about all of this put together um, in the whole wider world of society. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, and share.